guess what, geniuses. I don't hate everything. If I hated everything, that'd make me predictable. And I am not predictable. Jade West is the snarky, angry, and incredibly talented member of the Victorious Gang. Throughout the show's run, Jade shows a passion for directing, playwriting, singing, and she even dances. But beneath her love for the arts lies an unrelenting hatred for a lot of things. Okay, Jade, what do you hate? Uh, tuna fish, flowers, giggling, the word panties. But where is all of this hate coming from? How did Jade become so angry at the world? What drives Jade's unjustifiably jarring behavior? The jeering juxtaposition of genuinely jovial parents? Or is she just juvenile and jaded? Join me as we take a look. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. If you get me seriously angry, I won't get in a fight with you, but I will retaliate in a way that'll make you sad for a long time. One of Jade's most prominent character traits is her incredibly short temper, often caused by some interesting triggers. I love Sesame Street. Sunny! No! <laughs> You can't just say no. No! 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 One such trigger is being touched. Jade doesn't like being touched at all. In fact, the only person she's okay with touching her is her boyfriend, Beck Oliver. And her acquaintance, Tori Vega. Hmm. More on that later. This abhorrence for being touched is especially notable considering Jade's apparent enjoyment of pain. Okay, this is actually causing me pain, and not the good kind. So four years ago, Trina did her audition, and it was like torture, but not the good kind. I'm telling you, something's up with this guy. Beneath all of this anger, hatred, and sass lies a fascination for things others would often consider morbid. Things like blood, fatty lumps, dead flowers, and an undying love for scissors. This bile fascination is further cemented by her love of horror movies, including her favorite one, appropriately titled The Scissoring. Wait, that, that one about the girl who comes back from the dead and uses a pair of scissors on her two best friends? Starting with the pretty girl. You're a fan of the scissoring? Oh, yeah. First of all, I love that movie more than I love my mother. And I know exactly where that house is. I even know how to sneak in the backyard. This is a copy of the costume that Tawny Walker Black wore in your favorite movie, The Scissoring. And look, these are the actual scissors from the movie. So, it comes as no surprise then that even though Jade is incredibly talented at singing, dancing, and acting, her true passion is for directing. Her horror-themed audition video in Hell and Back Again and her melancholic play called Clowns Don't Bounce in Prom Wrecker are just two examples of Jade's style of writing and directing. But I think the most important piece that Jade has ever written and directed has to be Well Wishes from Walkstar. It's a play that was deemed too weird and disturbing to have it staged at Hollywood Arts. It's about a girl who falls into a well and drowns in her own tears but then gets brought back to life after her father kisses her forehead. Hmm. I wonder what could have inspired Jade to write something like that. I'm sick of this! Ice cream reminds me of my childhood. You didn't have a happy childhood? My favorite toy was a hammer. You finished the puzzle. It's no secret that Jade's home life is less than ideal, though not many direct references are made to her childhood or her current living condition on this show. If you check her slap page videos, you'll find these gems. See this piercing here? And this one here? I got both of them about 45 minutes after my mother told me I wasn't allowed to get my face pierced. Sorry, Mom. My daddy hates everything I stand for. He just wants to hang out with his new wife and her yappy little dog. And he's never kept one promise. You know, the one time my dad made me breakfast, the one time, literally once, 
I threw up the whole morning, spent the whole morning puking. Based on this information, we can see that Jay disrespects her mother and resents her father. But we also learned that they're divorced. This is probably where Jade's anger and frustration comes from, or at the very least, where it began. I'm going to be a little transparent here and tell you that growing up in a household where your parents argue regularly is not a fun experience. No matter how nice your day might be going, you always worry about when the next fight might happen. Then it does happen, and you hide so you don't have to see anything. But while you're hiding, you begin to ask yourself questions like, is it my fault? There's no guarantee that this is the type of relationship Jade's parents had. After all, it's never outright stated. But if her relationship with Beck is anything to go by, then maybe Jade is only living what she learned. Don't you think Jade and I fight a lot? Sure. Yeah, but, but all boyfriends and girlfriends fight a lot, don't they? And these negative feelings at home can affect how she treats all the people around her. She's pushing them away because she doesn't want to get attached. She's afraid of losing someone dear to her the same way she lost her father. Yes, I said father, not mother. Based on a few things Jade says throughout the show, we're led to believe that she lives with her mom, not her dad. If this is true, then it adds a lot more credence to Jade being worried about what her dad will think of her play, Well Wishes. I invited my dad to come see my play on opening night. He hates me. He thinks that wanting to be an actor or writer or director is stupid. Which brings up something I find very interesting. Often when people talk about Jade West, they have a tendency to assume that she hates her father. But let me ask you something. If Jade really hated her father, then why would she ask for his approval? Dad? Jade? My play? I thought it was excellent. Thanks. She doesn't have to prove anything to him, and she didn't have to invite him at all. So obviously, Jade's feelings for her dad go beyond just a blinding and blood-boiling hatred. Maybe that's why Jade has such a serious passion for the arts. It's the best outlet for her to express these complicated feelings she has deep inside. All these complicated feelings are why Jade has so many trust issues at home and at school. Which is probably why she doesn't consider the people she regularly hangs out with her friends. Speaking of friends... Why do you feel that I don't have one decent friend that I can really count on? Because... Maybe some people don't like you? No, let's talk about this for a minute. At school, Jade frequently spends time with the main characters. Even though in the first couple of episodes we see Jade sitting alone a few times, we know that she's relatively popular at Hollywood Arts. Oh my god, Jade! I am so sorry! Please don't destroy me socially, I didn't mean- Is she popular because she's exceptionally talented, or is it because she's extremely intimidating? You decide. Regardless, Jade does have a group of people that she can call her... Friends? Tori's not my friend. I only tolerate Robbie. No one likes Trina, and Kat's basically a pet. If the great ping pong scam is anything to go by, we know that at the very least, Jade's known Beck, Kat, Andre, and Robbie for around two years. Her relationship with Beck is complex, so much so that I devoted an entire analysis video to it. Links in the description below. Overall, it's obvious that she genuinely loves Beck, she just doesn't know how to show it properly. Likely because the only example of a relationship she would have seen growing up were her parents, who again, are divorced. Beck really doesn't help matters much, sometimes even going so far as to play on her insecurities. Jade's relationship with Kat is pretty good, all things considered. Even though Jade never says it, it's obvious that she really cherishes her friendship with Kat. In fact, in her Hollywood Arts yearbook, Jade gives a special shout-out to Kat, which reads, Kat, I don't know how I would make it through the school day without you, even though you annoy me sometimes. Plus, you are really good at backup singing and allowing me to shine. There are plenty of episodes where Jade and Kat team up to work on things together, and even the slap has videos of them spending time at each other's houses. Because of this, I can say with utmost certainty 
that Cat Valentine is Jade West's best friend. But let's not forget the times Jade's been mean to Cat. In The Bad Roommate, Jade makes Cat eat bush peas even though she hates them, because Cat exposed an unflattering picture of Jade on the slap. In Crazy Pawnee, Jade cuts off all of Cat's hair after Cat accidentally waxes off Jade's eyebrows. They may be best friends, but Cat's not immune to Jade's vengefulness. Jade's relationship with Andre isn't really explored that much, which is a shame because the few times they are on screen together, they jive pretty well. The episode that stands out the most between them would obviously have to be Jade Gets Crushed. The episode where Andre develops feelings for Jade after hearing her sing lyrics for his song. As the episode goes on, Andre talks about how bad it is that he has feelings for Jade, especially if she's dating his best friend, Beck. By the end of the episode, Andre's over his crush and the two hug each other. Jade's okay with being touched by Andre, and we even see it earlier in the episode when she asks for his hand. This is further cemented by Jade not mentioning Andre at all when she lists her negative feelings towards each of her colleagues. Am I the only one that thinks Andre and Jade would have been an interesting couple? Wait, 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 hear me out. The biggest problem with Jade and Beck's relationship seems to be a lack of mutual understanding. When Jade acts out, Beck's response is usually pretty immature. Suppose that sometime after they break up in The Worst Couple, Jade and Andre start dating instead. What brings them closer, you ask? Andre's willingness to listen. Seriously, Andre could bring the stability that Jade lacks in her life, while Jade could bring the backbone that Andre lacks in his life. If you keep Beck around, you could have him struggle trying to cope with his ex-girlfriend now dating his best friend and having a much better relationship without him. Then maybe Beck could finally have some character development. Just a thought. Jade's relationship with Robbie seems pretty neutral. It's obvious that she's not a fan of his antics, but it should be noted that in Rex Dies, she's the one who suggests that Robbie get rid of Rex, claiming that it isn't healthy for him to keep Rex around. Which is probably true. As for how Jade feels about Trina, well... Beach, I am so in! No, 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 no. no. Stay no, away! I can't no, wait! No, 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 why did you invite me here? We did you invite us. No one likes you. Why are you in that sack? So I can perform in the parade. Wait, now we got to go back. No one likes you. And finally, after 16 victorious videos and many comments about this specific topic, it's time we talk about Jade's relationship with Tori. Where do I begin? I've read countless interpretations about what's going on between these two. Let me start by saying that the first time Jade sees Tori, Tori is rubbing her boyfriend Beck's shirt. So right away, Jade doesn't like Tori. As revenge, Jade pours a drink on Tori's head. Tori's way of getting back at Jade? Kissing her boyfriend in front of the entire classroom. That all happens in the first episode, so when people ask why Jade is so mean to Tori, um, did you even watch the first episode? After that, Jade goes out of her way to antagonize Tori at every given opportunity, leading to what is, in my opinion, the sweetest moment between the two. You're just gonna let me get away with it. You took detention, and you're scraping crusty pudding off the wall on a Friday night just so I won't get in trouble? Pretty much. Well... You can't be nice to me when I've been mean to you. That's not how it works. You see, Jade doesn't understand why Tori would be nice to her. But Tori, being the tenacious soul that she is, doesn't cave under pressure and tries to show Jade kindness. Which then brings into question all the times Jade's been mean to Tori after this moment. Is it Jade's way of proving to herself that nice girl Tori only pretends to like her? Does Jade genuinely dislike Tori? Is Jade secretly jealous of Tori? Or, everyone's favorite interpretation, does Jade have romantic feelings for Tori? And is her hatred towards Tori the result of her repressing these feelings? Or maybe she's showing affection the only way she knows how to? Honestly, with the amount of evidence there is to support each of these interpretations, I'd rather make a video about it than try to skim through things in this video alone. If you want to see a Jade and Tori analysis, please be sure to vote in the next voting poll. 
Regardless on where you stand with their relationship, one thing remains certain. What Jade does to Tori and Tori gets stuck is straight up diabolical. Jade goes through Tori's medical records and makes her consecutively donate two pints of blood instead of one. Surprise! Here's my face. Jade West's aggression likely comes from her insecurities about being accepted. To counteract her fears of being rejected, Jade bites first. She pushes people away before they can do it to her. But deep down, she's worried that one day, everyone will leave her. Jade isn't evil, she's just complex. Anyway, I had a lot of fun making this video, and if you want me to make a video about Tori and Jade, let me know in the comments below. By the way, I made a backup channel just in case anything happens to this one, so if you're already subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe to that channel as well. Links in the description below. It's called Janiac Tunier. Get it? Finally, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who's been supporting my merch. It's been going great. I hope it's getting to you safely, and one day I hope I can actually see you rocking the merch. Please, check it out. I'll put the link down below. If you have any ideas for merch, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments below. And if you make me laugh, I'll even give you a heart. Until then, I'll leave you with this. I'm gonna be straight up, we haven't thought about it until we just pressed out record. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we did kidding. talk about it. We talked uh, about it briefly, it was really brief. It was like super brief. High five. <laughs> One all the week, man. <laughs> Let's get this. She is the super nice diva of the cast. She is the best, man. Her clothes are always on point. Wonderful heels and lipstick and just ready to go. And I, I just I just can't get enough, man. She's awesome. I'm just saying.